Welcome to my kitchen. I've been using the Opus Exodus 1500 to power my refrigerator, my side-by-side -side here for a few hours. And it's starting to get down around halfway to battery capacity. And you might be thinking, well, what if you were in a power outage? What if there was a situation where, you know, the power wasn't gonna be on for, you know, another few hours? What am I gonna do whenever in a few hours from now, this is down to zero? So a lot of times people talk about extending the battery life of their power stations by adding like a lithium iron battery um, to the setup and it's kind of plugging it in like maybe it's like a you know you kind of treat it like a solar panel but is there another way what if you had something like this exodus 600 or an exodus 1200 can you take this device plug it into here in some way and charge it back up well let's find out By using the AC inverter of the Exodus 600, we're able to recharge the Exodus 1500. On the slow charge setting, the Exodus 1500 is gonna charge at about 400 watts. This is the Exodus 600. It can only put out 600 watts. What happens whenever I switch this to fast charging? Let's see. In order to change from slow charging to fast charging, I need to turn the inverter off briefly. And then I change it to fast charging and we see what happens. It's going to start building itself back up again. It's trying to go up over 400 watts right now. Remember the Exodus 600 only has a 600 watt inverter. It looks like the 1500 just isn't going to go above 600 watts when it's plugged into the Exodus 600. Looks like we're kind of bouncing around 470 watts of input into the Exodus 1500 from the Exodus 600. And that's pulling both from the AC inverter, which will allow it to run about 400 watts of input, and from the DC inverter, which at a max would be 120 watts. It looks like it's more like, you know, 70 or 80 here. So I know what you're thinking. I mean, we're already down to 69% left on the Exodus 600. We've barely been able to charge anything at all. It's just a relatively small battery. Why don't we try something bigger? This is the Exodus 1200. It should be able to put out a little bit more power, probably not any more power through the DC port because that's still just a 10 amp, 10 amp, 12 volt plug, but up to 1200 watts instead of just 600 watts. So both AC and DC are on and we're seeing the power start to be drawn from the 1200 into the 1500. So according to the Opus app, on the 1200, we are putting about 100 watts of DC power out, about 350 watts of AC power out. And of course that's coming into the 1500. Of course it sees it, we're losing a little bit there, it sees it as 94 watts of DC power coming in and 360 watts of AC grid power. So some discrepancy in the numbers, but around 460, 470 watts, which is what we saw coming off of the Exodus 600 as well. But of course, this just has a much larger battery to charge it with. Let me switch it up and change things to fast charging and see what happens then. All right, looking at how things are going right now, I'm still not seeing much more than the 470 watts that were coming in before on slow charging probably due to the fact that I'm 60% charged and might not be able to hit that full 800 watt input. I did see it flash above 500 watts. It's definitely a little faster than if we were doing just slow charging in DC, which seemed to top out around 470, but you know, it's bouncing up and down. It's definitely not a lot faster, but it is charging. We're already increasing the battery life and I've seen the battery life of the 1200 go down a few percent while we're raising it in the 1500 as well. So that's good. I'm glad that we can 
show that that works, let's talk about why we might want to do that. So you might be saying, hey, that's kind of cool, but why would I ever want to do this? And that's a good question. Let's say that maybe the power has been out for several days and you've got, say, your Exodus 1500 set up and it's powering several things in your house. You've got your refrigerator, you know, maybe some lights, everything's already plugged up in there. You don't have an external battery to plug in. Instead, what you have are a couple of power stations. Maybe you are able to take those power stations to grid power and get them charged up and then come back and top off the Exodus 1500. Maybe you just had those power stations already charged up and you don't need them to be charging or running anything else. So you can just dump that power in here while you're waiting for the power to come back. It's not the most efficient way. You definitely lose some in the efficiency of that. But in an emergency, if you're just trying to keep your refrigerator on and keep your freezer running, trying to keep your me medical devices working or something like that, I mean, you're just trying to get power in. This may be a way that you can extend the life of your power station. Fast charging on the Exodus 1500 at 60% wasn't taking anywhere close to 800 watts, but I am still charging at like 450, 440 watts coming off of the AC and the DC output of the Exodus 1200. That's very similar to the wattage that I was getting off of the Exodus 600. I imagine any power station that you have, even if it's not necessarily an Opus brand, would do exactly the same thing. As long as you don't exceed the um, inverter wattage to, to cause that to shut down. You should be able to drain all the power from any other power station into the Exodus 1500 or vice versa. You could use the 1500 and drain it into the 1200. You can use the 600 and use that as your main output. Whatever it is that you're doing, basically, this is just a power inverter. It doesn't understand or know that I'm going into another you know, power station, all it knows is there's a electrical draw that's going into this input over here. And this power station says there's electrical energy and we're going to use it to charge up the battery. There's, it doesn't know what it's doing. It's just doing it within the parameters that it was designed to do. So it works. And just because we could, I have the Exodus 600 cascading into the Exodus 1200 cascading into the Exodus 1500. We're down to about 6% of battery life on the 600, going into the 1200, which is now up to 89%, and the 1500, which is up to 68% from in the 50s before. Weird thing about the 600, <laughs> it actually has been kicking into like overload, like it's tripping as we get to the end. It may be too hot, feels very warm back there. So it's possible that it is actually working too hard. Yep, there we go. So I bet I have overheated that. See that little flashing thing. So let me turn it off and we'll let it cool down a bit. Maybe I get that last 4% out later. We'll see if it'll stay on. I'll let the 600 cool down a little bit. Tried to turn it back on, it tripped again. Now we're pulling another 300, 400 watts out of it. It's only 3% battery left, 2% battery left. It's getting really close. That's probably all the power we're gonna get out of there. Then we have the 1200, which is up to 82%. And the 1500, which when we started this was somewhere in the low 50s, I think, mid 50s, and now it's almost at 72%. So you can definitely cascade and charge your power stations from your other power stations, which could be handy should you ever need to transfer power or maybe you have these charged somewhere else and they come over to charge up whatever it is you're using to back up in a power outage.